Greetings everyone and welcome to Inside EVs. My name is Andre and today I'm going to uh, walk you around the Kia EV6 which has to be currently one of the hottest electric vehicles on sale. It's already gone on sale here in Europe and you're gonna get it pretty soon in the US as well in the first quarter of 2022 they say so soon. <laughs> This EV6 is a rival for the likes of the Tesla Model Y, the VW ID4, the Mustang Mach-E and other vehicles of that type. And there's also of course its sister vehicle, the Ionic 5 from Hyundai. Although these two vehicles look and drive quite differently and there are plenty of differences between them. And I'll get into that more as I walk you around and then I drive the vehicle. So the front end of the EV6 is uh, Definitely Kia-esque. It still has the, you know, the, the tiger nose grill thing that goes up here and... Although it is fake, it is completely covered. Air only goes through this lower part, which has active aero. These flaps, um, they rise and they allow air to go through. This is completely fake. The headlights are full LED. I'm pretty sure these are optional and they have a very cool uh, light signature, the daytime running lights. They have this, these um, parallel stripes here at the end, very cool. And there's also quite a strong indentation here, <laughs> that's kind of unusual. But the front end as a whole looks quite sharp and sporty. There's a frunk hiding under there. These are the mid-spec wheels, the 20 inch, currently um, shod in uh, winter tires from Nokian. There's a bit of Jaguar I-Pace about this vehicle as a whole, I think. That's clearly been a, a point of inspiration. What else? The door mirrors are um, an unusual shape with this detail here. And they, um, they are very cool. The bezel is quite big, but I guess they look like um, some BMW M mirrors. That's not a bad thing. The handles pop out when you unlock the vehicle. This is the key. You also get buttons to summon the vehicle. You have this black detail that runs along the bottom edge of the doors. This vehicle is quite wide, I must add. So um, that's why it has some scratches here and there. The rear is probably the most spectacular part of this vehicle with the um, light bar that runs all the way around and it wraps around the back. And if you look at it closely, you will see that it is actually a ducktail spoiler. So this has um, an aero roll as well. And it probably works in conjunction with the, with the spoiler thing. Which is uh, open like that. It's pretty cool. Definitely a sporty touch, I think. Another thing I noticed, and it's quite weird, is the fact that the vehicle has lights here. Like under the edge of the spoiler. They do nothing other than look cool, although that's also questionable. These interesting things are the rear indicators. Let me demonstrate them. Super cool. You see they have this texture around the back, the rear edge of the bumper. Well, it's nothing, there's nothing um, unusual about it, although I will say that it has these uh, protruding details. And these are actually lights, so the reversing lights and the rear fog lights. The EV6 logo, it seems to have the same font as the new Kia logo, which some people might read as KN with the reversed N. Yeah, let's open the, the trunk. So this is 490 liters, which makes it bigger than the Mustang Mach-E's but smaller than the VW ID4s and much smaller than the Tesla Model Y. Okay, so climbing aboard, what you immediately notice is that you sit quite high. The vehicle is, the seat rather, and it's in its lowest position. So the, let me just turn the vehicle on. So the steering wheel is a two-prong design. You get these two screens which are um, curved and they are, quite nicely integrated, I think. The dashboard itself is uh, its quite bold, I think, and this finish is really rather interesting. You get mood lighting here, and ex it extends all the way there, and you even get mood lighting here, 
where it's covered by the rubber mats that are in this vehicle. The steering wheel only has physical buttons, so no touchscreen nonsense, thankfully. The drive mode selector is handily located here. This is where you adjust regen, although I will point out that I think these are reversed. I would rather pull on the right paddle to increase regen and on the left paddle to decrease it. The graphics on the displays are pretty good. They look modern and sharp and up to date. This is how you put it in gear. Rotary control, very simple. This is a wireless charging pad for your phone. These are the controls for the ventilated seats, heated seats, heated steering wheel. And you can uh, totally press these by accident, as I did. I've repeatedly cooled the passenger seat in winter with nobody sitting in it. They are cool and you uh, will get used to them, but you might hit them by accident. The climate controls are also worth a shout out because you get physical uh, rotary knobs for the temperature control on both zones. So that's pretty cool. And even though this is a touch screen, it's actually quite okay to operate, I would say. You can put the climate in driver only mode so that it uh, limits the draw on the battery. And what's very, very interesting about this panel is it actually has two sets of controls. So you press this and then you get media, radio, track, seek. It's basically infotainment shortcuts. My gripe with this is that I would have preferred the, the some sort of physical controls here for the infotainment because I'm six foot tall and in my ideal driving position, if I extend out my arm, uh, my hand does not reach the screen and I have to move away from the backrest to touch the screen. This is not ideal. The central console cubby thing is huge, I mean very deep, and it's, um, it doesn't fall, it's premium car-like, it's quite solid, doesn't move from side to side. Although the console itself well, actually doesn't move. I have to step out for a second to show you the, the flat floor. In the Ionic 5, this is completely flat. There is none of this or any of this, but Kia opted to, you know, have this solution. You can put a handbag in there or drinks. That's pretty cool. So my tester is a top of the range example with pretty much all the boxes ticked. So it gets these um, perforated microfiber Alcantara-ish seats that, as I showed you, you can cool. They are not particularly sporty seats, and to be perfectly, perfectly honest, um, I have not actually found a great driving position in them. I'm still, uh, I'm still uh, working on it. This is what it looks like from the passenger side. It's pretty cool. I like this detail here. It's super interesting. It almost looks like plastic on top of fabric. It's hard to, um, to explain. It's quite cool. And if I hop into the back this is how you fold the seat and then it it actually locks into place that's kind of interesting you can't not be impressed by the level of legroom you have back here it's it's pretty big you know and i'm i'm a fairly tall guy i will say though that since this is an electric vehicle and there's a battery under the floor and the floor itself is raised, even though it's completely flat so there's no tunnel in the middle, you can't actually slide your feet underneath the front seat. There's not much else to talk about here in the rear, aside from the limited headroom for taller passengers, I'm fine, but anybody taller than me might not be. Um, this well-spec tester has uh, heating on the outer two seats in the back. You get absolutely nothing here on the center console thing. This is just blank plastic. There's a lot of plastic here. I can't say I'm a fan of this. So these weird looking headrests that give you bad posture are, um, well, the back of them is covered in plastic. There's plastic again here. This makes no sense to me, either functionally or aesthetically. It's this protruding thing is not my favorite. Vents on the B pillars. 
two USB-Cs, one here and one here. And the details that I mentioned on the dashboard earlier, they are actually aligned with these on the armrest. And I think that's a cool design touch. You can either have or not have cup holders. Oh yeah, and one more thing. This vehicle has quite poor rear visibility. And Kia decided to give you this tiny, ridiculous quarter light here that is absolutely useless when you're in the driver's seat. Thank God it has uh, around view cameras that are very high definition and uh, they help out a lot. I think that's enough walking around. Um, let's take it for a drive. Before we set off, I'll run you through my tester spec. So the car that I'm driving today is the rear wheel drive EV6 with the big battery pack. So it makes 225 horsepower, 350 Newton meters of torque, and it sprints to 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour in just over seven seconds, 7.3 seconds to be exact. If you opt for the all wheel drive version, that adds another 100 horsepower and a front motor. So it makes 325 horsepower and that drops the sprint time to 5.2 seconds and it's considerably quicker. You can also choose all wheel drive or rear wheel drive with the smaller battery pack, the 58 kilowatt hour pack. And the 58 kilowatt hour equipped vehicles are less powerful. So the base vehicle with the 58 kilowatt hour battery pack and only rear wheel drive makes just under 170 horsepower while the all-wheel drive vehicle with the small pack makes 235 horsepower, so 10 horsepower more than uh, the vehicle that I'm driving today. So my tester costs 63,568 euros, VAT included, and it has all the available packages on it. So the color is called Snow White Pearl, the interior upholstery is called Saturn Black, and it has pack 3, pack 7, pack 10, pack 11, pack 12, pack 16 and the optional heat pump. It pumps the residual heat from the battery pack into the cabin, making heating the cabin more, um, more efficient. This is only available on the big battery pack as well. High speed 240 kilowatt charging is only available on the larger pack. Cars equipped with the 58 kilowatt hour pack can only charge at up to 180 kilowatts. So I'm just gonna heat my steering wheel and seat and we're off. I will say that in Europe, you know, we have uh, mandated uh, exterior sounds for EVs and on some EVs they are quite loud and uh, annoying, but in the EV6 it's kind of electric vehicle noises that are um, slightly enhanced, but they are not spaceship noises, thank God. I mean, I like sci-fi stuff just as much as the next guy, but sometimes I think those are a bit much. In this configuration, the EV6 weighs just under two tons. So it's a pretty heavy vehicle, definitely, but all electric vehicles are heavy these days. It uses the same eGMP platform as the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Genesis GV60. The vehicle has four levels of brake regeneration. So if you tug on the right paddle all the way, it says level zero in the cluster, while at the other end, if you tug the left pedal four times, you move into iPedal mode, which is uh, Kia's one pedal driving. And I'm not usually a fan of one pedal driving, I will confess to that. But in this instance, I think it's actually pretty great. I've only used the uh, iPedal in my time with the EV6. It's just so um, easy and intuitive. And I really like that it also comes to a complete stop at uh, traffic lights and stop signs just by lifting off. And I'm pretty sure it also takes other factors into account, like its position uh, on the map and uh, what vehicles are near it, I guess. In terms of performance, this uh, 225 horsepower rear motor version with the big pack is, um, well, I wouldn't call it quick. It actually feels slower than the claimed sprint time. I've driven vehicles that are supposed to do 100 kilometers per hour in around eight seconds and they feel quicker than this. But if you want more performance, you can just add the front motor or wait for the almost 600 horsepower GT version, which will debut sometime this year and go on sale towards the end of the year. 
but I think that the version that I'm driving today is still the pick of the range. You get the longest range. I didn't even talk about the actual range figure. So this vehicle does 528 kilometers on one charge according to the WLTP test cycle. If you opt for all wheel drive, you're still gonna get um, over 500 kilometers on one charge according to the WLTP test cycle. It's worth noting that even though the EV6 has not been rated in the United States by the EPA. Kia is targeting a 300 mile range, which is pretty much bang on with what it's rated in Europe. And that's interesting because uh, EPA ratings are usually a bit more pessimistic than uh, WLTP. So that's interesting. When I picked the car up from Kia, it was fully charged all the way to 100%. And it said I could do 355 kilometers. I then did some stuff with the climate settings, like setting it only to the driver's side, disabling AC, because if, for instance, now I have 82 kilometers with 23% in the battery. And if I uh, tap the heat thing, it drops to 77, but it heats the cabin better. Kia says that this vehicle should be able to charge at up to 350 kilowatts thanks to its uh, 800 volt architecture, but currently uh, it is only rated for 240. And Kia says that that should bring your battery from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. It also has an uh, 11 kilowatt onboard charger. Just like the Ionic 5, the EV6 offers V2L, that's vehicle to load. This basically means you can power pretty much anything that would run on a household socket, although do keep in mind that it can supply more than 3.6 kilowatts. You can access this function either by using the special adapter that you plug into the charge port for when you want to power something outside the vehicle, or if you need to power something inside the vehicle, there's a socket under the seats. I will also say that the EV6 is a pretty big car. Its wheelbase is really, really long, hence the excellent passenger space, but it's also quite wide and quite long. It measures almost 4.7 meters. It's a big car. And just like the Ionic 5, you don't expect it to be as big as it is if you only previously saw it in photos. The Ionic 5 is surprisingly big. Even though the two vehicles are related, the Ionic is actually one centimeter longer for wheelbase than this vehicle. And they actually don't share a battery pack. They have uh, different suppliers and there are several differences between these vehicles. The Ionic is more comfort oriented, whereas this is a um, sportier vehicle. And it seems that um, so far reviewers prefer the more relaxed nature of the Ionic, but I've not driven it, so I cannot say. Its turning circle, the Kia's turning circle is actually pretty good. It's just over, I think it's 11.6 meters. Still not tight enough as you can see, but it's good. The vehicle is very maneuverable and I have to praise the, the steering calibration. It is definitely sporty, but it is not, uh, it does not make the vehicle feel uh, jumpy or uh, nervous to drive like some other sharp steering systems do. I like the Kia EV6. It's a great electric crossover that you cannot ignore if you want to buy one of these vehicles right now, wherever you are in the world. This vehicle is going to be available and it's going to be hard to ignore. And I actually, it makes me really, really look forward to seeing the Ionic 6, which will be the sedan built by Hyundai on this same platform. I'm not a crossover guy, but if you're a crossover guy and you like EVs, the EV6 is thoroughly, thoroughly recommendable. It is packed with tech. It has an augmented reality head-up display. It changes lanes on its own. Um, it drives, it pretty much drives itself on many types of roads. It is very well connected. It gets all, all the stuff. No, it's good. It's, it's very good. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until I see you again in the next one, take care.